So Senator Kennedy from Louisiana is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Grunberg. What the hell's going on at the FDIC? It's a troubling question, Senator. I read the report as you did. As I indicated earlier, it's, it is deeply disturbing and troubling, and we're going to bring all the resources of the FDIC to bear to understand what is going on, what has occurred, and how we can most effectively address it. Have you ever, how long have you been at the FDIC? I joined the board as a member in August of 2005. Okay. Almost 20 years then, huh? Yes, sir. Have you ever sexually harassed an employee at nope. the FDIC? No, sir. Apparently, you're the only one. Um, I mean, I just find this incredible. A former female employee recalled her male colleagues saying women needed to use sex to get ahead at the, at the FDIC as they stared at her. Did you read that? I did, Senator. Quote, according to one young woman, it was just an accepted part of the culture. One of the female examiners received a photo of a colleague's penis. During lunch with an examiner, another young female employee who had become friendly with this person she was having lunch with, the guy she was having lunch with complained to her about his marriage, telling her he wasn't having enough sex. And then he said to the young woman, obviously, if I walked into this office and you were naked, I'd F you right here. Did you read that? I did, Senator. Did you read the, 200, the, the uh, 2020 Inspector General's report when it said that the people at the FDIC were acting like they were in Animal House or Porky's Revenge? Did you read that report? I, I read the Inspector General report. And what did you do about it? Well, I was not chairman at that time. There were 15 recommendations, if I may say, 15 recommendations in that report. And I believe the agency addressed all 15 of those. Well, what did you do about it personally? Were you, what was your position, position at the I, FBI? I was a member of the board at the time, but yeah, I was what not. did you do about it personally? At that time, I didn't have the responsibility of you the chairman. You didn't do anything, did you? Not at that time, Senator. Okay. No. Did any of your other fellow board members do anything? Uh, as a general matter, that falls to the chairman who's responsible for the day-to-day -day It was management. somebody else's problem, not yours. No, well, I was a member of the board to the extent that we were consulted, but in this matter, it's really a management you didn't issue. think you had a fiduciary obligation to to, uh, to to those young women and to the and to the organization and to the banks that put up the money? Well, certainly as a board, we had that obligation, but it really falls to the chairman oh, to take the lead on this. Somebody thing. else's fault. Well, that there was a I mean, chairman. That's what you're saying, isn't it, Mr. Chairman? No, I think the the board the board sounds to me like it. Well, not Senator, if I may say, it, the board certainly has an oversight responsibility. But in the day-to-day -day management of the agency, which matters like this would fall to, I think it's reasonable to expect the chairman to take the lead. Well, when the banks last spring screwed up out in California, you blamed it on their board, didn't you? Mm, they, I think the, re, the, the report that was done on the failure found that the root cause of the issue was the management of the institution. Right. They also found accountability for the supervisors. The, the, the board was blameless, like, is that right? Is that what you're saying? No, I think the agency... Kind of like the board at the FDIC, it's blameless. If I may say, Senator, I think we, the report found, and I think I would indicate that we shared a responsibility as a supervisor. You and your colleagues ought to hide your head in a bag. This is no country for creepy old men. And they got no place at the FDIC. And this wasn't a news flash for you. You had a 2020 report and you sat on the board and you didn't do anything. And your colleagues didn't do anything. Mr. Barr, let me ask you about Basel 3 in game. I know you know this, about half of our credit now in America comes from non-banks. 
uh, isn't your increase in capital requirements just going to make credit more expensive for banks and push people in the non-regulated, non-bank financial system? Uh, Senator, the capital increases mostly affect trading activity of banks and other non-lending activities of banks. The, with respect to credit, we expect the uh, proposal to have only a very modest uh, effect on the price of credit. For example, if all of the operational credit risk... You would and, stake your uh, reputation on that? I, I believe that the analysis is correct in the pr proposal to the rule. Okay, but if I could are, ask one more question, Mr. Chairman, if that's okay. But we're very open to comment okay. on the proposal. Sure. So if people have other analysis sure. that would help us make a better judgment about that, we're very open to it. The, the banks are out west and, and elsewhere that went broke last spring, would this change have prevented that? The uh, banks that um, suffered losses uh, suffered losses pr primarily because of interest rate risk. It and this proposal, prevented. sorry, if I'm I may, sir. Senator Senator Kennedy. Uh, last question. This is if, it. if you could just answer my question. I'm, I'm, I'm my trying friend. to, sir. Yes, it would directly address that because for large banks, their interest rate risk would be brought into the capital role. Their unrealized losses and gains would be reflected in capital. So it does directly address the kind of risk that we saw. Senator okay. Menendez is recognized.